gonna talk about how to titrate an amino acid to do an amino acid titration problem and find the isoelectric point. So this is a problem you're gonna have on your homeworks and tests and it can be a little confusing. I know I was confused about it at first. So this question we're gonna be doing is using the information below, calculate the PI of the peptide valine histidine. So um, first thing you need to know about this question is what is the isoelectric point, which is PI. So the isoelectric point is just the pH at which the peptide or the amino acid has a neutral charge. So we just wanna figure out when this peptide is going to have a charge of zero. So one way that I tried to do this when I started was just to try to memorize the titration curve and memorize which pKa's to average and that confused me a lot. And so what I found really helpful when doing these problems is to actually draw the peptide out so you can see why it would have a certain charge and you can see when it would be neutral and then figure out which pKa is to use from there. So the first thing that we need to do is I like to draw the peptide just at a pKa or at a pH lower than the initial pKa at a point where it's going to be completely protonated. Because remember the pKa is the midpoint of titration so above the, uh, at a pH above that pKa it's going to be deprotonated and at a pH below that pKa, it's going to be protonated. So this is the peptide at a pH below the pKa of two, which is the first pKa of histidine. So if you draw this out, it's gonna be completely protonated. So we see there's a positive charge on this amino group of valine, a positive charge on the R group of histidine, and then the carboxyl group is protonated. So this is going to have a charge of plus two. So then we're gonna go and draw it at a pH of above two, because we're going to draw it at the first pKa, um, as histidine has a pKa of two for this carboxyl group. And we're going to use this first lowest pKa for histidine, because instead of valine, because the valine carboxyl group is inside the amino acid. It's creating the peptide bond. So that one is not going to be deprotonated, However, since this one is on the end, this one is the one we're going to want to use. So it has a pH of two, so we're going to go ahead and draw it above the pH of two. So above a pH of two, since the pKa is two, this carboxyl group is going to be deprotonated, and so the carboxyl group is going to take on a negative charge. So then this peptide is going to have a charge of positive one. Okay, so we're not quite at neutral yet, so we want to do see what happens when we take the next pKa. So the next pKa is going to be the pKa of six, which is for the R group of histidine. So above a pH of six, the R group of histidine is going to be deprotonated. So, oh, I forgot to draw the positive charge. So this should have had a positive charge, but it's not going to anymore. So this should have been this. It would have been like this, but above the pH of six, it's going to lose that extra proton. And so it's just gonna have one positive and one negative charge. So this is where it's going to be neutral. It's gonna have a charge of zero. So this would actually be where the isoelectric point would be, but it's not at the pH of six because that's just where only half of this proton is deprotonated. So we wanna find out what the other pKa is where it's going to be negative one so we can um, average those two pHs. So then we want to come back to our chart and we're going to find out at which pKa the other amino group is going to be deprotonated. So you notice we have two options, but we're going to use the one for valine because that's the amino group that's on the end of the peptide. So the histidine, like of over here, the histidine amino group is in the peptide bond, so that one's not going to be involved in deprotonation. So we're going to use for valine, the pH of 10. So above a pH of 10, this is going to be deprotonated. And then it's going to have a neutral charge. So then this whole peptide, since it has a carboxyl group, will have a charge of negative one. So then we see that between a pH of six and a pH of 10, this amino acid or this peptide is going to have a charge of zero. So that would be the isoelectric point. So all you need to do to figure out the pH at which this is zero 
is to add up the two pHs on either side and divide by two to find that midpoint. So the pi of this peptide is going to be eight. And that's pretty much it. That's how you calculate that. 